<clears throat> hey guys, my name is Radhika. I'm your TA for Economics 1 BO3, Microeconomics, Introductory Microeconomics, and this is Chapter 5, Elasticity. So, elasticity, what is elasticity? Well, All right, in economics, elasticity is the ratio of percentage change in one variable to the percentage change in another variable. It is a tool for measuring the responsiveness of a function to change in parameters in a unitless way. Frequently used elasticity include the price elasticity of demand, price elasticity of supply, income elasticity of demand, elasticity of substitution between factors of production, and elasticity of intertemporal substitution. We won't be looking at all of these, but we'll be looking at some of these. Elasticity is one of the most important concepts in neoclassical economic theory. It is, a use, it is useful in understanding the incidence of indirect taxation, marginal concepts as they relate to the theory of the firm, and distribution of wealth and different types of goods as they relate to the theory of consumer choice. Elasticity is also crucially important in any discussion of welfare distribution, in particular consumer surpluses, producer surpluses, or government surpluses, and we will be looking at these surpluses later on. So, demand. Demand is said to be elastic if the quantity demanded responds substantially to a change in price. Demand is said to be inelastic if the quantity demanded responds only slightly to the change in price. So, let's use an example. So, let's say when the price of Tim Horton's coffee goes up, God forbid, um, then people will begin to get coffee elsewhere very quickly because there are many close substitutes. Starbucks, Second Cup, the Student Union, where you can get coffee, um, or since coffee is not a necessity, so I'm told, um, then we can move to a substitute such as tea. Some would consider coffee a luxury, while most students would consider it a necessity. So let's look at this. This is a elastic curve, something such as for coffee. So say that the price of a medium coffee goes from one dollar to two dollars. The percentage change in price is a lot smaller than the than the change in quantity. So here we have a dollar and we have this quantity demanded. As soon as the price of this coffee jumps up to two dollars, we see that the quantity demanded decreases substantially. So why don't we look at the flip side, a good that it has an inelastic curve. So when gas prices go up, people have to commute to work still and still buy gas. Because gas has no closed substitute, the demand for gas is inelastic. So here we have an inelastic curve. So we see that here, point one, when gas is, say, at a dollar, it would be nice, um, we see that this is the quantity demanded at one here. As soon as gas jumps up to two dollars, we see that the percentage change in quantity demanded is less than the percentage or the, the, the change in price. So this is why we have an inelastic curve. Now one thing you can take note of, when you have an inelastic curve, it is very, very steep. When you have an elastic curve, it is much flatter. So, so ultimately what determines the elasticity of a good is as such. One, availability of close substitutes. Necessity versus luxury the definition of the market, and time horizons. Now, time horizons tend to make a good more elastic over time because close substitutes will come about. The long run makes goods more elastic and the short run makes goods less elastic. So if a good is inelastic, there's going to be a demand and then there is an economic profit to be had. If there's an economic profit being produced, if there are no barriers to entry, new firms will enter the market. So, what is the formula for elasticity of demand? Quite simply, it is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. Now, for those of you who have not read the book yet, here is the formula for per percentage change. You have your final value minus your initial value divided by your initial value. Now, please do not get this mixed up when you're putting it into your calculator there are in fact brackets over or around the numerator in this. So you first have to do the final value minus the initial value then divided by the initial value. 
So let's do an example of this. In 2001, I can't quite remember the exact, exact price, but say that a large double-double at Tim Hortons was $1.10. Now, today, it's $1.52. I believe it actually went up a little recently. So what do we do first? We do $1.52 minus $1.10, in brackets, divided by $1.10. So it is our final value minus our initial value divided by our initial value. And that is the formula for percentage change. So the other way is the midpoint formula that is available in your textbook, and that is actually the, uh, the official formula that you will be using for percentage change. Um, so this is the formula that you will need to know because it eliminates the problem of elasticity changing when calculating elasticity from point A to point B and from point B to point A. So on a curve, if you do not have a linear function, the elasticities will tend to be different when calculating forwards and backwards. And I will leave that to you to uh, figure out the midpoint formula in class lecture and from your textbook. So determining if a curve is elastic, the rule of thumb is the flatter the curve is, the more elastic it is. The steeper it is, the less elastic it is, as I demonstrated earlier. Demand is inelastic if elasticity is less than one, important to note. If elasticity is exactly one, then it is unit elastic. An example of this is a 10% change in price leads to a 10% change in quantity demanded. So you have 10% divided by 10% equals one. If a 22% increase leads to an 11% change in quantity demanded, it is inelastic. If a 10% change in price leads to a 20% change in price, it is elastic. I'll let you double check my math to be sure, but take my word for it if you want. If elasticity is greater than one, it is an elastic demand. So how total revenue changes when price changes with an elastic demand? Well, with an elastic demand curve, an increase in price will, according to the law of demand, lead to a decrease in the quantity demanded. But if the change in quantity demanded is substantially larger than the change in price, this is probably because there are multiple substitutes. So, with this knowledge, if the price is lowered by a little, then the demand change will be larger than the price change and overall increasing total revenue. So, in turn, how total revenue changes when price changes with an in elastic demand? Well, with an inelastic demand curve, an increase in price will, according to the law of demand, still hold, uh, still holding, um, will decrease the quantity demanded. But the change in quantity demanded will be smaller than the, than the price change. This is probably because there are few substitutes now with an inelastic demand curve. So with this knowledge, if the price increased by a little, then the demand change will not be significant and total revenue will increase. So now remember, in the first one with an elastic demand curve, lowering the price by a little will increase total revenue. And with an inelastic demand curve, increasing the price by a little will increase total revenue. So income elasticity of demand. In economics, elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of the demand for a good to a change in the income of people demanding the good, ceteris paribus. It is calculated as the ratio of the percent change in the demand to the percent change in income. For example, if, there is, if in response to a 10% increase in income, the demand for a good increases by 20%, the income elasticity of demand would be two. So if income increases by 10%, leading to a 20% increase in the demand for a good, then you have 20% over 10% equaling two. Therefore, this good is actually a normal good. If it was an inferior good, as income increases, you would see a negative number, indicating an inferior good, because as income increases, the demand for that good will decrease. So, in, in, to sum this up, three important points. A negative income elasticity of demand is associated with inferior goods. An increase in income will lead to a fall in the demand and may lead to changes to more luxurious substitutes. A positive income elasticity of demand is associated with normal goods. An increase in income will lead to a rise in demand. If income elasticity of demand of a commodity is less than one, it is a necessity good. If the elasticity of demand is greater than one, 
It is a luxury good, or sometimes known as a superior good. A zero income elasticity, or inelastic demand, occurs when the increase in income is not associated with a change in demand of that good. These would be known as sticky goods. So basically, as your income increases, the quantity demanded for a good changes. Let's assume a normal good for now. So the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change of income. And that was demonstrated right here. So the numerator was the change in the demand for the good, and the denominator was the change of income. So when dealing with normal goods, the higher one's income, the greater the quantity demanded for, for a normal good. Therefore, normal goods have positive income elasticities, and in turn, inferior goods have negative income elasticities, because the higher income, the lower the quantity demanded for that inferior good. So now moving on to cross-price elasticity. In economics, cross-price elasticity of demand, or cross-price elasticity, or, yeah, measures the responsiveness of the demand for a good to a change in the price of another good. It is measured as the percent change in demand for the first good that occurs in response to the change in price for the second good. Sounds kind of confusing, so let's do an example. If, in response to a 10% increase in the price of fuel, the demand for new cars that are fuel inefficient decreases by 20%, the cross price elasticity will be negative 20 over 10 equaling negative 2. So we had in the numerator the change in demand for that good, for good 2, in response to change for good 1. So we had an increase of fuel prices by 10%, leading to a decrease of 20% uh, demand in, let's say, large pickup trucks. So a negative cross-price elasticity denotes two products that are complements, while a positive cross-price elasticity denotes two substitutes. These two key relationships go against one's intuition, but the reason behind them is fairly simple. Assume product A and B are complements, meaning that an increase in the demand for A increases the demand for B. Therefore, if the demand for product A increases, and the demand curve for product B has to shift to the right. Increasing B's price resulting in a positive value for the, for the cross elasticity of demand. The exact opposite reasoning holds for substitutes. So, cross price elasticity orbits around the complements, around complement and substitute goods. It measures how the quantity demanded of one good changes as the price for another, uh, for another good changes. Whether the cross-price elasticity is positive or negative number determines if the goods are substitutes or complements. So the last elasticity that we're going to be looking at in this class is price elasticity of supply. In economics, price elasticity of supply, or PES, is an elasticity defined as the numerical measure of responsiveness to the supply of a given good to a change in the price of that good. Price elasticity of supply is a measure of the sensitivity of the quantity of a good supplied in the market to the changes in market price for that good, Cetris Paribus. Per the law of supply, it is posited that a given price and corresponding quantity supplied in the market, a price increase will also increase the quantity supplied. The price elasticity of supply, or uh, the, the price elasticity of supply, is a numerical measure by how much that supply is affected mathematically. So, kind of like the elasticity of demand, it is simply the percentage change in quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in price. In other words, PES is a percentage change in the quantity supplied that one would expect to occur after, let's say, 1% change in price. For example, if the responsiveness to a 10% rise in the price of a good the quantity supplied increases by 20%, the price elasticity of supplied is 20% divided by 10% equaling 2. So this was your quick review for Chapter 5 and Elasticities. Hope it was helpful. My name is Radek, and I will see you in Chapter 6.